Hi, everyone. This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of pancreatic cancer. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what pancreatic cancer is and some risk factors for getting it. So pancreatic cancer is going to be a cancer of the pancreas. So if we look in this image here, here's the stomach, leads into the first part of the small intestine, which is known as the duodenum, and tucked in along the duodenum is the pancreas. Now, the pancreas is going to be a digestive and endocrine organ meaning that it has many different functions. So we think of it as the organ that produces insulin. It also produces other hormones like glucagon, but it also produces digestive enzymes. This is where we would call it an exocrine gland as well. So it produces digestive enzymes that help to break down proteins and fats and sugars, and it releases those enzymes into the duodenum. Now, the risk factors for getting pancreatic cancer include the following. Tobacco smoking, this is going to be one of the most important risk factors for getting pancreatic cancer. Chronic pancreatitis is also another risk factor. So in association with chronic pancreatitis, we can think of acute pancreatitis and alcohol consumption. So alcohol does play an indirect role in increasing the risk for pancreatic cancer through its ability to increase the risk for chronic pancreatitis. We can also see obesity and type 2 diabetes being risk factors for pancreatic cancer. Having a family history of pancreatic cancer is also another risk factor. And certain dietary factors also increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. These include eating less fruits and vegetables and a higher consumption of red meat are all indicated as possible associated risk factors for getting pancreatic cancer. Now, pancreatic cancer is going to be the 11th most common cancer worldwide. It's the seventh most common cause of cancer death. And it's going to be very rare in younger patients, especially under the age of 45. Unless there's a family history, then we may see a younger age of onset. And we are going to see the prevalence of pancreatic cancer increase with increasing age after 50. So it increases linearly as a patient gets older above the age of 50. And the median age of onset for pancreatic cancer is 70 years of age. Now let's discuss the signs and symptoms of pancreatic cancer. The first one we're going to talk about is abdominal pain. So the abdominal pain in pancreatic cancer is often going to start out at least as a vague digestive discomfort. So it's not really going to be much of a pain. It's going to be nonspecific. It can be mild. And over time, it may become more severe, especially if the cancer is in late stages. Now, the pain is often going to be in the mid-epigastric area. This is where the pancreas is located in this area. And along with the abdominal pain, we may see back pain occurring as well. So in some cases, the epigastric pain can radiate to the back. And it's either going to be in the mid-back, so it'll be directly behind the epigastric area, or it can be even lower, so it can be in the lower back as well. And this indicates more severe cancer progression. And more specifically, it means that the cancer has had invasion into the retroperitoneal space, so in behind the pancreas, and it has invaded splanchnic nerve plexus. So the cancer spreads in behind the pancreas retroperitoneally and starts to invade splanchnic nerves. So that's going to cause back pain in these individuals. So that's also another important finding. But a lot of times we may see a very vague, mild discomfort. So it may not be overt until late stages of this particular cancer. And another very important finding in pancreatic cancer is jaundice. So jaundice is going to be a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. If it's the eyes that are yellowed in coloration, that's going to be known as scleral icterus. Now the jaundice is going to be due to high levels of bilirubin in the blood. And this is what we would call hyperbilirubinemia, high levels of bilirubin in the blood. And it's due to the pancreatic cancer causing compression of the common bile duct and preventing release of bile. So it can affect the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct as well. It's going to be where there's a cancer in the head of the pancreas. So it's going to be in this area of the pancreas here, closer to the bile duct and the pancreatic duct. So if it's a cancer in the far end of the tail of the pancreas, it's not going to cause an obstructive jaundice. So again, it's going to be a cancer in the head of the pancreas that ends up impinging on some of these biliary structures, leading to what we would call obstructive jaundice. And the reason that it causes this issue is because bilirubin is excreted in the bile. So the bile is concentrated in the gallbladder. It's released through the common bile duct and into the small intestine. That's how we excrete bile and bilirubin. But if there is some obstruction. We can't get the bile past the common bile duct and into the small intestine. We're going to have a backup of bilirubin that eventually leads to a buildup of bilirubin in the blood. This is why we get yelling of the skin and the whites of the eyes. In the Hallmark textbook characteristic finding in pancreatic cancer is this jaundice, and we call it, in the case of pancreatic jaundice, we call it painless jaundice or painless obstructive jaundice. So we talked about the fact that 
there's some mild abdominal pain, but it's a lot of times mild, vague abdominal pain. It doesn't really show itself or manifest itself very overtly. So it's often going to be considered painless and painless jaundice is going to be the characteristic finding of pancreatic cancer. It's not present in all patients. Again, it's going to be due to a cancer in and around the head of the pancreas, but it's again going to be the characteristic finding that we learn about with regards to pancreatic cancer. Now, a lot of the symptoms we can see in pancreatic cancer are going to be due to that obstruction of the biliary structures like the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. Some of these other signs and symptoms that can occur along with jaundice include dark urine. So dark urine coloration, the urine can be orange or tea colored. This is again due to obstructive jaundice. And this is going to be due to, again, higher levels of bilirubin in the blood that lead to darkened coloration of urine. So we talked about the fact that if we're having a buildup of bilirubin in the blood, we can have yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, but we can also have darkened urine coloration that can also occur as well. And we can also see light stool coloration. So often this is titled as clay colored stools, but the stool may be yellow or reddish in coloration. And this is also due to obstructive jaundice. The reason that this occurs is because bilirubin, when it's in the bile, it gets released into the small intestine. It gets acted on by bacteria in the small intestine. It gets converted to something called stercobilin, which then gives stool its brown coloration. So if we're not getting bilirubin into the gastrointestinal system, it doesn't get converted to stercobilin. We're not going to have brown colored stool. It'll be a lighter color. In some cases, it can be clay colored. Other cases, it can be more of a yellowish coloration. And we can also see pruritus occurring in cases of obstruction of those biliary structures we talked about before from the pancreatic cancer. So this pruritus is going to be a generalized itching, so it can be itching all around the body. It's going to be progressive, so it can start off very mildly and then it can become more and more severe over time, and it can become intense. And the pruritus can occur prior to jaundice. So it can occur weeks prior to the patient or the patient's family noticing that the skin has a bit more of a yellow tone or the whites of the eyes are a bit more yellow. So the pruritus is going to be no, more noticeable, at least to the patient, than the yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. The pruritus is going to be due to a, an accumulation of bile salts. So again, due to the obstruction in this area of the pancreas, we can impinge, we can block off the common bile duct, and we can't release the bile and we can't release bile salts that help emulsify fat when we're digesting fat. So we're going to have a backup of bile salts and eventually it's going to get into the blood and that's going to lead to an itching sensation. So we start to have higher levels of bile salts in the blood that causes in some cases very intense and generalized itching. We can also see nausea occurring in cases of pancreatic cancer. The nausea can occur with early satiety. Early satiety means that you get full quicker from eating. So you might feel hungry, but then you start eating and you get this sensation of being full very quickly. That's early satiety. You are satiated earlier than expected. The nausea and early satiety are going to be due to cancer's growth impinging on other abdominal structures like the stomach and the gastric outlet. So the gastric outlet is going to be where the stomach meets the duodenum, this part of the small intestine we talked about before. And if the cancer is starting to push on that area, then we're not going to be able to get food out of the stomach as easy into the small intestines. So that will cause food to just sit in your stomach. You'll feel like you're more full and you can feel nauseous from this. We can also see anorexia occurring as well. So anorexia is just a term we use for reduced or loss of appetite. And this is going to be related to nausea and early satiety. So anorexia, nausea, and early satiety can all occur in pancreatic cancer. Some other important signs and symptoms of pancreatic cancer include weight loss. So weight loss is going to be unintentional. It can occur due to cancer-related cachexia, but it may also be related to decreased absorption of nutrients due to reduced exocrine functioning of the pancreas. So again, we talked about the fact that the pancreas has exocrine functions, meaning that it has functions where it releases digestive enzymes, like enzymes that help break down proteins and fats and sugars. If it's not able to release those enzymes into the small intestine, patients are not going to be able to digest and absorb their food properly. So that's going to lead to weight loss. They're not going to absorb as many calories. And again, that decreased ability of the pancreas to release those digestive enzymes is going to be due to obstruction of the pancreatic duct. And fatigue can also occur in pancreatic cancer as it can occur in many different types of cancer. The fatigue is going to be due to multiple factors, but some of these include cancer-related issues, nutritional deficits, and others as well. We can also see diarrhea occurring as well. This ties in with the weight loss because the diarrhea is going to be due to malabsorption. And again, this is also going to be due to that obstruction of the pancreatic duct. 
So we're going to have a reduced release of enzymes, like the enzymes chymotrypsin and trypsin. These are enzymes to help break down proteins. Lipase is going to help break down fats. Amylase is going to help break down sugars. So those are going to be important enzymes that are not released from the pancreas appropriately due to obstruction of the pancreatic duct. That can lead to malabsorption. And by the time these unabsorbed nutrients enter into the large intestine, water can flow toward those undigested and unabsorbed nutrients, and that's going to lead to diarrhea. And the stools in patients who have malabsorption can have other characteristics as well, including greasy stools. This would be known as steatorrhea. So it's going to be greasy, fatty stools. That's going to, again, be due to the fact that we're not releasing lipase to help break down fats, and we're not also releasing bile and bile salts to help emulsify fats for digestion and absorption. And the stools can be malodorous, meaning that they can be quite smelly. Again, this is going to be due to reduced digestive enzyme release. And we can also see other very interesting, strange, or atypical findings in patients with pancreatic cancer. These include depression. Now, you may be thinking depression may be common in other types of cancer, but in pancreatic cancer, it's going to be more common compared to other types of abdominal malignancies. This depression can be very significant. Patients can have the depression even before having some other somatic symptoms. So somatic symptoms are going to be those bodily symptoms like jaundice and itching and the abdominal pain. So the depression, significant depression can occur prior to those bodily symptoms. Some patients describe feeling that they just simply know something's wrong internally. They can feel something going on inside them. This is going to be an important and interesting finding. And it's hypothesized that this depression may be a perineoplastic syndrome, meaning that it's going to be caused by immune system dysregulation due to the pancreatic cancer leading to systemic findings that are not directly related to the cancer. So that's also very important to point out here. And another interesting finding we may see in pancreatic cancer is what we call trousseau sign. So trousseau sign is going to be also known as migratory thrombophlebitis. So thrombo and thrombophlebitis is going to be related to thrombus or thrombi, which are clots that occur in blood vessels around the body that lead to inflammation of those blood vessels, which is known as phlebitis. So this can occur in pancreatic cancer as well. This would be considered a perineoplastic syndrome. And from the other name of this particular finding, migratory thrombophlebitis, it is migratory, meaning that some patients will have inflammation of blood vessels, so phlebitis or thrombophlebitis in different parts of the body that look like this. And then eventually they can start to reduce in inflammation. They can clear up. And then another part of the body can be affected with thrombophlebitis. And then that can clear up and then another part of the body can be affected with thrombophlebitis. So it's going to be migratory. It can move around different parts of the body. So that's going to be true so sign. And that's also another finding in pancreatic cancer. Please check out my full lesson on pancreatic cancer if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.